So here we are with Curator with a Camera. I'm Bob Gwynn, and we're going to have a look inside the dynamometer car here at the National Railway Museum. Now the dynamometer car, which is always parked up next to Mallard, was built here in York in 1906. What it is, is a, a car that is used for testing steam locomotives. It's basically presented as it would have been just post-war, and it has this, this beautiful scrumbling on the side, which is actually what people used to do with, uh, with varnish to get that effect. It's an unusual vehicle because it's the only one with an odd number of wheels in the collection. And there's the, the measuring wheel down there, which is lowered separately for when they want the table and everything else inside there to run and start measuring. It's a bit like if you're at school and you're sent around the football field with one of those measuring wheels. It's a bit like one of those writ large, which of course, you know, is from the analog age Probably with a few apps you could do quite a lot of what this machine does on your mobile phone, but these were the days when they had to use physical equipment to record things and make comparisons. The dynamometer car has underneath it a horizontal 30 leaf spring under here, and that spring is actually directly connected to the paper trace they have in the car that tells you what the pull is that the locomotive is doing. So that's the exterior of the dynamometer car with its measuring wheel. So let's go and have a look inside. So we're, here we are in the dynamometer car, the, the testing car that gets, sits behind Mallard. This is the kind of crew quarters we're in at the moment where you could relax, have a cup of tea in amongst the testing. It's a clear story, it's a clerestory as it's known, uh, so it's got these rather beautiful lights. It's got ventilators, just like you might see on an old carriage. And of course, an essential from the 1930s, there's an ashtray just about everywhere on this. The other essential part of the uh, domestic uh, interior is this rather splendid toilet um, and sink, uh, which means that, you know, you can adjust your tie before you go to the uh, station hotel when you're out on a, a run doing some testing and then we come into the main heart of the machine this car was used for authenticating flying scotsman's 100 mile an hour record and flying scotsman proved that you could do what they wanted to do with steam now if we talk about mallard's record breaking run because this carriage was there in mallard's breaking breaking run directly where we are now behind the the tender and what we have here is all the instruments that can give you some advice, uh, some understanding of how your steam locomotive is working. The one that everybody would recognize as speedometer, uh, calibrated to 120 miles an hour. There were actually more than 11 people in here. And of course, they would all be mesmerized by the speedometer because of course, Joe Duddington, wasn't looking at the speedo. Well, we've seen that on the, on the engine. The speedo's under the fireman's seat. They would have been looking at that. And that was calibrated to 120 miles an hour. So they would have known what speed they were doing. And then you've got the different uh, Cambridge instruments. So you've got a CO2 indicator over here. And the CO2 indicator is basically telling you how much carbon is going up the chimney. In other words, how well the fire is doing at burning the coal. The story goes that when they set off, they'd actually forgotten to turn the lights on in here. Uh, and as they went up Stoke Bank, they went to the tunnel at the top there, and it was working so hard, the locomotive, that it was throwing hot coals out the chimney. And they were basically given this fire show of hot coals spinning either side of the carriage. It's got, on this side, it's got indicators that, that show uh, the steam heat in the cylinders. And then it's got a pyrometer which is showing the heat uh, in the fire. And that big 30 leaf spring I spoke about, well, A, you have this that lowers it down, that lowers the spring down so it's engaging with the rails. And then once you get going, that spring is driving one of these pens here. 
And you can see the way the mechanism works down there that's driving it. The paper going across here is driven and it basically, this paper is driven across here and the, pe the pens then record the different details you want, the pull of the engine and other things that are going on in the engine, which you actually put some instruments in the engine to make that work. Then on this other side round here, you've got a number of other things. You've got obviously the electrical equipment, uh, which is very old school to say the least. It looks a bit like um, how you get Frankenstein's monster to wake up. But it's electrical equipment that drives all the uh, electrics in here. And then you've got things that measure the water. This is measuring the water. So you've got the water carefully measured into the tender and you're measuring the heat combustion from the coal. So it's basically recording everything you would want to know about your locomotive that's steaming along. A couple of other things in here, you've got obviously got a speaker because you've got a, a microphone attachment that, that connects with the, the locomotive. And you come down here and you come to how you connect all those things up. You're very familiar, I'm sure, with the you're plugging things into a computer to make sure all the data is flowing between your computer and your uh, your internet. Well, this is how it was done in the old days, and it's very heavy. There you go. Similar set of connections as you'd get on a computer connection, but that plugs in on the loco, and the loco is fully wired. And then you've also got a speaker. Uh, that would go on the loco so you can talk to the crew in here. A um, couple of other things you've got in here. Obviously you've got a means of looking forward along the side of the train. You sit in there, you can look forward and backwards along the side of the train. And then down here you've got a means by which you can record onto the table mile posts and other things. So just hanging up here You've got these little bell pulls. You just, when you press that, it drives something on here that marks it. That means you're actually recording where the location is you are. You're looking at mileposts at the side of the line. So the people on here would have known that record was broken. And the paper would have been running through here really quite quickly by that stage. They'd already primed the press. And it wasn't Mallard they were shown, it was in here they were shown. And they were shown the paper trace on this. At the time, they reckoned the maximum speed was 125 miles an hour. That was claimed at the time. Subsequently, they looked at the record that was held here, that had come off this paper trace, and decided the maximum should have been 126 miles an hour. So it was very important to the record. Today, we take it as granted just as normal, that you get on a train from York to go to London and the, the maximum speed for mile after mile after mile is 125 miles an hour, which was the absolute peak claimed for the Mallard record. So Mallard's got to be remembered in context. It was really pushing the limits for its day. So to this day, we think of Mallard quite rightly as the fastest steam locomotive in the world. Thanks for watching. Uh, there are more episodes of Curator with a Camera coming, so do subscribe so you don't miss them.